good morning children welcome back to our online classes we will continue with the second chapter that is sexual reproduction in flowering plants today we will start with pollen pistil interaction the events from the deposition of pollen on the stigma till the entry of pollen tube into the ovule are collectively called pollen pistil interaction it is an essential step in fertilization of angiosperms and determines compatibility and incompatibility of pollen and pistil it is a dynamic process involving pollen recognition followed by inhibition or promotion of pollen it includes different steps first one is recognition of compatible pollen the pistil has the ability to recognize and accept the right or compatible pollen of the same species and to reject the pollen grains that are incompatible either of the same species or of other species it is the result of continuous dialogue mediated by chemical components of the pollen interacting with those of the pistil after recognition of the correct pollen pistil promotes post pollination events that lead to fertilization now growth of a pollen tube the pollen grains reach the receptive stigma of the carpel by the act of pollination pollen grains after getting attached to the stigma absorb water and swell after compatible pollination the pollen grains germinates on the stigma to produce a pollen tube through one of the germ pores the components of the pollen grains then move into this tube the pollen tube grows through the tissues of stigma and style by secreting the enzymes that digest them in some plants that shed pollens at two cells condition the generative cell divides and form the two male gametes during the growth of pollen tube into the stigma in plants which shed pollen in the three cell condition pollen carry the two male gametes from the beginning now entry of pollen tube into the ovule after reaching the ovary the pollen tube can enter the ovule either through the micropylar end that is porogamy or through chalaza that is chalazogamy or through funicular or integuments that is mesogamy it then enters one of the synergids through the filiform apparatus present at the micropylar end the filiform apparatus directs the growth of pollen tube by secreting some chemical substances all these events which are mentioned together are referred to as pollen pistil interaction and the knowledge gained by gained in this area helps plant breeders in manipulating this interaction even in incompatible pollination to get desired hybrids now we will start with artificial hybridization it is the crossing of different species of sorry and often genera to combine desirable characteristics to produce commercially superior varieties it has been used by the plant breeders for crop improvement program 
and it is achieved by the two methods the first one is emasculation in emasculation the anther is removed from the bird before it dehyses using a pair of forceps it is mainly done when the female parent bears bisexual flowers second process is begging the emasculated flower is covered by a bag of suitable size generally made up of butter paper so as to prevent contamination of the stigma by unwanted pollen grains when the stigma of bagged flower becomes receptive the collected pollen grains are dusted onto the stigma the flower is rebagged and the fruits are allowed to develop if the female parent is unisexual emasculation is not necessary in this case the female bird is directly bagged and when the stigma turns receptive suitable pollen grains are dusted onto it so as to allow germination and the flowers are rebagged now we will start with the new topic that is double fertilization the process called double fertilization was demonstrated for the first time by Navasting in 1898 in Lilium and Fritillaria the most important and unique characteristic feature of angiosperms is the participation of both male gametes in the act of fertilization the pollen tube releases the two male gametes into the cytoplasm of one of the synergids then the penetrated synergid gets degenerated one male gamete fuses with the egg cell to form a diploid that is 2n zygote this process is called syngamy or generative fertilization the diploid zygote finally develops into the embryo the second male gamete fuses with the two polar nuclei or secondary nucleus in the central cell to form the triploid that is primary endosperm nucleus pen the process is called triple fertilization as three haploid nuclei are involved in the fusion after triple fusion the central cell becomes the primary endosperm cell which gives rise to endosperm while the zygote develops into the embryo as both the fusions syngamy and triple fusion occur in an embryo sac the phenomenon is termed as double fertilization let us see the earlier slide once again you can see the pollen grain has been shedded on the stigma okay now this pollen grain will interact with the stigma there will be secretion there will be secretion of the chemicals by the stigma which will lead to the formation of the pollen tube here you can see there is germination of pollen tube this is the basal pollen part which is called ovary which has the locules inside which there are the ovules okay now this pollen grains has the two cells that is a generative cell and the vegetative cell if you see in this diagram there is germination of pollen tube 
pollen tube grows into the style the generative cell travels inside the pollen tube it divides to form the two male gametes which are called the sperms okay then in this diagram you can see the pollen tube penetrates an opening in the ovule called the micropore okay through the micropore the pollen tube enters inside the ovule where the embryo sac is present so this is the enlarged diagram of the embryo sac pollen tube enters here okay the tip of the pollen tube breaks and then there will be release of the two male gametes okay so here you can see this is one male gamete this is second male gamete this is one this is second so the male gametes or the sperm nuclei sperms are released in the embryo sac and one of the sperm fertilizes the egg to form the diploid zygote this is egg cell so when there is fusion of the male and female gamete or sperm and egg it results in the formation of a diploid structure which is called zygote the other sperm fertilizes the two polar nuclei to form the triploid endosperm which will become a food source for the growing embryo now this is the life cycle of the plants okay which shows that pollen is transferred from the flower to the from the anther to the stigma that will be fertilization and after fertilization the flower will wither only the uh, ovary will remain then there will be seed development in the ovary after the formation of the seeds the seeds will disperse and it will germinate into a new plant again this is the figure showing the <coughs> double fertilization okay there will there is release of the pollen grains on the stigma okay this is pollen tube here you can see black color structure right that is pollen tube so pollen tube germinates it uh, germinates throughout the length of the style and finally through the micropyle region it enters in the ovule this is what embryo sac where one female gamete called egg is present these are the three antipodal cells and these two are the synergids okay so one male gamete fuses with the egg nucleus here you can see this is one male gamete so it fuses with the egg cell and then later it results in formation of a new structure okay that is egg fuses with one male gamete it results in formation of a new structure which is called zygote and this is diploid egg is haploid male gamete is haploid so when this two fuses it results in formation of zygote which is diploid and the another male gamete fuses with this two nuclei this are the two polar nuclei about which we have already studied how they are formed we have already studied these are what two polar nuclei so one male gamete fuses with the two polar nuclei to form the triploid endosperm nucleus okay it results in formation of triploid endosperm nucleus so children i hope you have uh, understood about the pollen pistil interaction and then we have learned about artificial hybridization and lastly we have learned about double fertilization i hope this much is clear to everyone in our next class
will be studying about post fertilization events okay and in post fertilization events we will be studying about development of endosperm development of embryo seed formation okay so that's all for today i hope you all have understood it thank you